It's nearly 6.30. You're watching East Midlands Today. Our top story tonight, a man is charged with the murder and rape of a teenager. Now, unlocking the past brick by brick, dozens of volunteers are helping to restore a 200-year-old lock along the Grantham Canal. It's all part of a major restoration project funded by the Heritage Lottery. And the aim is to bring back to life this disused waterway and preserve a little piece of history, as Gita Penze reports. Right, time we moved on to the sport now. Yep, we were thinking about it actually in the meeting. We said we've you got are. all the others. We've got stags, foxes, rams, panthers. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> a rock and roll footballer coming up. Amber Peat was last seen on Saturday evening when she left her home in Mansfield. Officers say they aren't treating the death as suspicious. Well, our correspondent Simon Ward is in Mansfield for us now. Simon. Well, the number of floral tributes has been increasing through the day here, near to the place where the body was found. Although there's been no formal identification, police have confirmed the body was found as part of the search for Amber. It's less than a mile away from where Amber lives, uh, where she left on Saturday night at around 5.30. Her family have said it's totally out of character for her to go missing in this way. And the principal from Amber's school has been speaking this lunchtime. Amber has been a student at the school since September. Hundreds of local people here in Mansfield have been helping in the search for Amber. They've been thanked by the police and Nottinghamshire police have said, sadly, this is not the outcome any of us were hoping for. Our thoughts are with Amber's family. The post-mortem examination is taking place today. Those results could be revealed later. OK, Simon, thank you very much is a start, but it certainly doesn't go far enough. Well, Mr Bone, you've heard what Mr Allen had to say there. If parents are having problems, doesn't the government have a duty to help them? No, I don't actually go along with that. I think the worst person to help someone will be someone from the government. And now the news for the East Midlands. Good afternoon, I'm Simon Ward. Steve McLaren looks set to leave Derby County. Discussions about the future of the former England manager have been continuing today. The club failed to reach the championship playoffs this season. Natalie Jackson sent this report from Derby. If somebody's murdered in front of a CCTV camera or a major crime takes place and nobody's watching at that time, is that going to be worth £246,000? No amount of money in anybody's life is worth a lot more than £246,000. That's why I'm trying to get the message across to this government Please give us a fair deal for Derby so we don't put us in this difficult situation. But you make the local decisions. Yeah, but we make you the You decide where the money goes. You could keep the cameras being watched 24 hours a day. So what expense do we do that at? There are vulnerable people out there. There's vulnerable adults, vulnerable children. We have to get our priorities right. This is and not that's a decision you do. have to make as an elected councillor. We have to make this decision. There are difficult decisions to go ahead. But as long as Derby's not getting a fair deal from the government, some of these decisions will be made. With me now is the deputy leader of the council, David Sprayson. Why are you selling off the council care homes to a company that's failing? Well, we want to secure the future of these care homes and make sure they're here for the future, for future residents. Yes, but my uh, question was, why, why sell it to a company that's failing? Well, they're not a failing company. Well, they are, they are according to the Care we, Quality we, Commission. We've, we've seen minor, minor concerns around uh, their homes, uh, which they've addressed very quickly. Good evening. Well, I'm in Sheepy Magna, where, as you can see, it's dry at the moment. In fact, people enjoying an evening pint. But they're all set here at the Black Horse pub. They've got the sandbags ready because it's been a difficult time for some people. In fact, villagers are concerned about more flooding in the next few days. And a warm welcome back to Channel Report. Joining us live here at Normal Point in Jersey, ready for the final leg of the Clipper Round the World race. 35,000 miles they've been doing around the world, and they started off many months ago. The Jersey vessel, the new vessel, was named here in Jersey. We're just counting down now for the firing of the gun here at Normal Point. It's going to be loud. Rugby now. Leicester Tigers are turning their thoughts to the Guinness Premiership after their defeat away to Perpignan in the Heineken Cup. Fly half, Toby Flood has been telling me the Perpignan match was frustrating because there were too many mistakes. Tigers are still in the cup, but this weekend they're preparing to host Newcastle Falcons. This week's a short week. We play Sunday and, and play Saturday, so not be too much running on the legs, but a lot of, a lot of uh, time paid to detail and a lot of attention on detail. Yes, we're looking forward to that. Despite the big shirts, looks like they had fun, didn't Absolutely, they? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. It's great to see the uh, the football shirts of all of our teams, Notts County, Nottingham Forest and Leicester City, uh, thousands of miles away. I reckon they've got some new fans, don't thousands you? Thousands of miles <laughs> away, yeah, and in all that sunshine as well. Conrad Thomas was roughing it on the streets of Derby. Suffering abuse while in care set him on a path of drugs, theft and prison. 
When he was released, there was nowhere to live. Heroin, crack cocaine, amphetamines, cannabis, anything I could get my hands on at the time. Um, obviously, the spinal addiction, you know, it's it got worse and worse. I needed more, so obviously, crime was starting up again. Now things are very different for Conrad. Free of his addictions, his life has seen a remarkable turnaround. With help from Action Housing, he now has a flat in Derby. Okay, so this is the living room. Yeah. As you can see, nicely decorated. It's great. It is great. Isn't it? Walk through here. We have the kitchen. Fantastic. It's so you've been here about a year. About a year now. Yeah, it's been been lovely. Um, can't can't fault it. Um, everything everything's gone fine since I moved in. My life's improved tenfold. This is Camp Jeroboa in Bavaria, which is being treated in exactly the same way as a frontline base would be in Iraq. I'm also being treated as an embedded journalist, right down to wearing the body armour. I'm living in the camp alongside B Company. They use one of the latest heavily armoured vehicles, the Mastiff. Sergeant Nathan Potter has served in Iraq and says training under operational conditions is very important. Uh, and being a lad from Leicester, you know, I take great pride in being a platoon sergeant in B Company. 200 years ago, one particular passerby would be difficult to miss. Born on the 13th of March, 1770, Daniel Lambert worked in the city as a keeper of the Bridewell with his father. Bridewells, or houses of correction, were originally for homeless people, but later became prisons for a range of minor offenders. Experts aren't sure if it's true, but there's an anecdote about Daniel Lambert challenging people in the pubs to a running race, as long as he was given a slight head start. He would then run through one of the many passageways here in Stamford, and because he was so big, the other runner couldn't get past him. 